Hey guys, what is going on? NK here. Today we're going to be having a look at one of the most effective loadouts for the support class. Now I've been using this loadout for a pretty long time and it's pretty fun. Uh, it's a really good loadout to use at pretty much all ranges. This loadout is sort of a hybrid between those who like to run and gun and those of you who like to be a bit more tactful and stationary. The setup of this loadout does allow a lot of freedom. If you want you can use alternatives, some of which I will be talking about and discussing and I'll even be talking about when you should use them and how you can become the best player you can be. I spent a lot of time putting this video and class together so if you guys could hit that like button and subscribe for more loadout and BF1 guides I would really appreciate it. Now with this class, unlike Assault or Scout, you aren't limited to your engagement options being close quarters or long ranges, you can actually do both to an extent, this is because the loadouts weapons are super accurate and there's a few features which allow them to be used at more ranges than you would usually be allowed. Now do take into account that this loadout is best at short to medium ranges, but every now and again with trigger discipline you will be able to get a few kills at long distances, but as always shooting a target this far away can be tricky, especially if they're trying to shoot you. And with that being said, this whole loadout will be broken down so you guys can understand as to why I've chosen each weapon or piece of equipment and the alternatives if you wish to use them and what make them so effective. Now the first and probably most vital part of this loadout is the primary weapon. For this you're going to want to use the Bar M1918 Storm. Now this weapon is an absolute beast, it's super accurate and does very good damage with a decent hit fire. Just to give you guys a quick breakdown of the weapon, the maximum damage you can do per bullet is 23, between 0 and 11 meters. The damage per bullet then drops off to 20 damage per bullet at 30 meters. Despite this, it still takes the same number of bullets to kill the target, so between 0 and 30 meters the bullets to kill are 5. Now if we compare this to all the other weapons in the support class, we can see that the bullets to kill with all weapons are 5 as well, but if we then look at the time to kill, we can see that the bar actually has the least time to kill, so if you and the target both have 100 health and shoot at exactly the same time and the enemy has a mad MG, you're going to win granted that you get all your shots on target. Not only this, but the maximum damage of the bar is the exact same as the SMGs available to the Assault class, with the Automatico, Hellregal and MP18 all having a maximum damage of 23, however their minimum damage drops off to 12 for the Automatico and 13.5 for the other two SMGs. Now considering that the bar's minimum damage is 19, this means that there will be a range where you can engage these Assault classes and win. Now due to the Automatico and Hellregal having a much higher rate of fire than the bar, you're going to want to avoid the very close quarter skirmishes simply because they'll be doing the maximum damage, but will also be shooting at a much higher rate of fire, so the time it takes to kill you will be much lower. Moving on, as the distance between you and your opponent increases, the damage of the SMGs drops off significantly, and at 25 meters onwards you're going to definitely be able to outgun all the three SMGs we have with ease, as the Automatico's damage falls off to 15 and the Hellregal and MP18 fall off to 18. So if you really think about it, not only does the bar outgun all the support weapons, it also can outgun most of the assault weapons, hence why this loadout is one of the most effective you can use. Moving on for our sidearm, we're going to want to use either the Repetier Pistol or the number 3 revolver. Now the reason I've listed two here is simply because sometimes it's more useful to use one or the other. Now some maps provide many more opportunities for close quarter combat than the usual amount. Maps such as the Argon Forest and the FAO Fortress are brilliant for using the number 3 revolver. The reason you'd use this sidearm is because killing assault classes in very close quarters with the bar isn't very likely. Given that the Automatico has a rate of fire of 900 and the bar only has a rate of fire of 600. Of course the damage per bullet in close quarters will also be at its maximum of 23 so there's no chance there. In order to try and even the odds, the number 3 revolver is a very safe bet. Now this revolver is very much a do or die kind of gun, missing a shot could end up proving fatal, however it can also save your skin on multiple occasions. The revolver is definitely better equipped than the bar in taking out assault classes in the super close situations. The damage per bullet of this sidearm is 53 from 0 to 6 meters and 34.73 at 15 meters. I wouldn't recommend using the revolver further than 15 meters because it starts to become ineffective. It's most effective in the 0 to 10 meter zone, because at 10 meters you can still two shot an enemy. Now if we are to compare the revolver against the Automatico, which is definitely the most effective assault SMG, we can see that the time to kill for the revolver is 416 milliseconds and the Automatico's is 293 milliseconds. This is probably giving you the best chance to kill the enemy and stay alive. Moving on, the Repetier Pistol is the second sidearm which I prefer, simply because of the fact that it has a larger clip size and is a bit more forgiving when you're trying to rush. It's got a pretty good rate of fire with good accuracy and so it can be a bit more useful if you're trying to secure a kill at range, because the number 3 revolver's recoil may not allow you to do so while ADS. Now in terms of equipment you want to use your normal stick grenade, a crossbow launcher, the frag variant and an ammo crate. Now quite simply you want to use the ammo crate because you'll be doing a lot of shooting and the bar only has a 20 bullet clip with 100 rounds spare. So you're going to run out of bullets pretty quick, considering the range that the bar provides you won't need to move so much to kill enemies so the ammo crate will come in handy as you can just resupply whenever you need to. 
Now usually I would use an ammo pouch simply because it allows much more maneuverability than is allowed with the ammo crate. I found that this mobility was always necessary with the support weapons simply because I always wanted to position myself in the best range to kill enemies and make sure that my bullet damage was good enough and using an ammo crate while moving around a lot wouldn't make any sense as if I ran out of ammo I just have to run back and wait to resupply whilst with an ammo pouch I could simply run and gun. However, ever since I started using the bar, I found that I don't need to run around as much as the accuracy and damage of the weapon are pretty good. This means that I don't need to worry about the range either and if necessary I can just switch to single fire to try and get kills at long ranges. And considering that I don't need to run around as much it would make more sense to use the ammo crate compared to the ammo pouch simply because it gives you more ammo and you can supply multiple times. If you do run around from time to time you can always put down a new crate which is perfectly fine. Of course, if you are a person who runs around a lot, using an ammo crate may not be the best option because it will tie you down and you may run out of ammo and you'll kind of be tied down to stay near your ammo crate point, so if necessary, use the ammo pouch. Do bear in mind, however, with the new ammo 2.0 update that DICE is looking to push out, it will mean that only ammo crates resupply explosives, ammo pouches don't do so, so bear that in mind if you're looking to throw grenades and use your mortars. For our second piece of equipment, we're going to be using the crossbow launcher, however once again this is situational. Sometimes it may be more useful for you to use the mortar launcher which is the air variant because maps like the Argon Forest or Monte Grappa, especially in operations, only have a few paths which the enemies can push through so it becomes super easy to constantly blow up your enemies when they all cluster at one point. Now personally in my opinion I prefer to use the mortar air launcher, the reason as to why is it allows a bit more freedom and mobility when actually playing operations. For example if I'm trying to attack a point and there's quite a few enemies there, I don't necessarily have to be too close whereas I do with the crossbow launcher and I can just put my mortar down and start firing at the enemy and get a few kills and try and take the point. Now in terms of alternatives, one very viable alternative to use to improve your long range engagement ability is using the bar telescopic. The difference between the storm and the telescopic is that it has a telescopic scope and a bipod. I found this very useful when playing as a defensive team on operations or anywhere with long sight lines. The telescopic variant is absolutely amazing and it fires like a laser so you can easily take down enemies who are usually not really going to have a chance to actually beat you. You can pretty much destroy anyone and not worry about anything and it's really good to use the ammo crate in this situation as well. Just plop it down next to you and have a field day as I'm doing now. The only problem is of course when going into short to medium range encounters where you can't hit fire but it becomes difficult to ADS and track the target so you want to be slightly cautious and aware of positioning in relation to the enemy. But anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did smash that like button, leave your comment down below and subscribe to this channel for more Loader and BF1 guys. This is NK signing off, I'll see you guys in the next video, take care.